I've been waiting a long time to get a good quality British Rail large logo class 47 on the layout and I originally pre-ordered this model over three years ago based on the older tooling. With the model eventually arriving with Backman's latest class 47 tooling, was it worth the wait and is it worth the asking price? It's time to take a closer look. Hi, thanks for joining today's review. We'll kick off with the usual unboxing, followed by our close-up and 360 views of the model. We'll then get into our short running session, and we'll follow this with the usual summary, scoring, and final recommendation. Okay, let's get underway. Okay, so here we come to the unboxing. So this is the first of the retooled Class 47s that I've uh, purchased. So this is my first experience of them. Now the box looks the same as the, the previous uh, versions, so which is kind of interesting. Uh, they didn't go to town on anything there. So let's just take a look at this guy. Um, so it is really the same experience as you'd get from a standard uh, Class 47, I guess, from, from Backman. Uh, if you're purchasing one. Uh, so this is our model here, so it looks, looks pretty good. So let's just take it out of the... Again, as I say, there's nothing special about this packaging at all. It's standard stuff. Uh, we've got a pretty comprehensive looking um, detailing kit here. So a kind of a complicated looking um, DCC blanking plate. Uh, obviously tying off all the different functions in it. Um, We've got uh, snow plows there. We've got a lot of we've got couplers, and we've got a lot of pipe work and some coupling pieces, etc. So there's a lot in that detailing kit, and I might certainly look at putting th something like the uh, snow plow. Uh, might be looking to add that. Okay, so let's get this guy out. Again, it's pretty well to say the same sort of packaging you'd expect from. Uh, Typical model. Uh, the weight is, is 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 kind of the standard weight as well. It's not um, it's not anything excessive. Uh, so let's kind of see what we've got here. So it does look a very nice finish. Uh, that's the kind of first impression uh, with nice levels of detail on the bogies. Um, very nice levels of detail on the bogies. Nice nice underbody detail. Uh, nice looking glazing, including around the engine areas. So we'll, we'll see what that turns out later on. Um, I'm just kind of looking into the cab area here, and there is a lot of detail in the cab, that's for sure. Now, interestingly enough, um, with these models, uh, Backman have actually abandoned um, including drivers in the model. <sighs> Not sure quite why. Um, because one of the reasons for buying a sound fitted model like this, one of my reasons for doing it, apart from the fact that it tends to be more cost effective, you're getting the sound for maybe an extra 80 pounds, for example, typically that kind of money, as opposed to if you were to go out and buy another decoder, you're probably going to be paying 110, 120, and you've also got postage and packaging and all of that to go with that. So it's very handy to get it pre-fitted and you pay, pay less. What the other reason is it saves you having to open up a model like this, um, uh, you know, an expensive model, and uh, and potentially damaging it in some way or you know causing other problems. So I'm going to have to open this guy if I want to add a uh, uh, add a driver to it. So again, you know, it's not it's not alone um, in the marketplace for that. Most most other models don't have drivers either, so um, they kind of leave it to yourself to do it. So. Just a pity, I did like having the drivers in the models uh, from Backman. Now, some of them weren't always the best either, so that's another point. So let's just look at the front here. Um, so this guy looks a little bit wonky, and he's actually a bit damaged as well, so that looks like it got caught. Um, okay, so he's broken off there, actually. So that's not a great start. Um, and bent. See, this one is clean. Okay, so that's not great. Um, what else have we got? We've got the metal sprung buffers. That one is kind of stuck. So we'll have to loosen him out. Um, okay, it's not a good start. So that's the two things. And 
another one of the spawn buffers is kind of stuck okay he's released easily enough this spring yeah okay he's okay um yeah that's not good now i'm wondering is that down to the case in some way um but not not a great start now a little dab of glue should fix that a very tiny dab um it, there's not this is not uh, beyond repair that's very minor, so I think I'll be looking at returning a model for that sort of an issue. Um, just looking around quickly. No, there's nothing, there's no pieces in the box or anything like that, so it doesn't look like there's anything broken off this model. So that's a positive. Uh, let's take a little bit look underneath here. Now, I think the drive on these should be pretty good. I'm expecting all-wheel drive and all-wheel pickup. Uh, I can see this interesting ducting underneath the body here. Uh, that's kind of running up the length of the body and there's also two dip switches in there i'll have to figure out what they're for in a minute so this is sound fitted as you can see and um and i say hopefully i'm trying to i was trying to avoid having to open the model to to do fitting the sound uh the wipers are good and clean the glazing is very clean um in general though i see a little bit of a mark on the glazing there now um let's see if that's a bit of dirt i'm not sure it's not perfect. Yeah, see, it's there. It's clear. There's nothing there. There's a little bit of mark there, as you can see. It looks like a defect in the glazing, actually. Or maybe it's just something that'll rub off. Actually, it's looking like it's going to rub off. Okay, so I'll check that out later on. Um, okay, not gr not great. <laughs> this side of the model seems to have taken a little bit of a beating. Um, so we shall see. Okay, that's not. Yeah, it's not quite a spring. Yeah, it's, it's kind of half springing there. Okay, a little couple of niggly quality issues here that I would say for a model like this. Um, so in general, I, I was looking for a large logo um, a British Rail model uh, in, of the 47, and that's what I've been waiting three years to get this, to be honest. I had it ordered, pre-ordered as the previous versions of 47. And then they essentially decided not to manufacture that and, and bring it on to the new tooling. Uh, so which is why I've, I've got it now. Um, so that's kind of was my history with this particular model. Um, so it, it, it looks pretty good. Um, a couple of little niggly quality issues there, though, that would kind of disturb me. Um, it's not carrying, you know, a vast amount of separately fitted details. A lot of detail here in this underbody area. I'm just holding on to here. And these bogies have a lot of kind of three-dimensional detail uh, there's a lot of depth to them um, now there's no actually additional painting or anything like that going on here um, so i need to take a look at a few photos and see whether there's anything perhaps missing there um, but there is it's 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 like very very detailed those bogies are very detailed and they're very solid as well so there's a very good solid feel to them uh, so there's nothing look like it's going to break off there or anything too easily um, and there doesn't seem to be anything that's going to get in the way of the travel of the bogies, which is good. So these things probably will easily run on radius two's uh, curves, so that's that's fine. There she is. Um, a couple of little niggly quality things there, so uh, not kind of disappointed to see those um, on a model like this, premium model. And uh, some of that comes down to the packaging, to be honest. And I have kind of, I guess I'm a kind of a critic of this very basic packaging for more expensive models like this. I think you do need to go up a notch and look at what Dapol and Acura Scale do for their more expensive models. Um, well, even for Dapol does it for their standard models, never mind their more expensive models. Uh, so let's see here. So we have our decoder already fitted. Um, we've got these dip switches at the bottom. Okay, so these are if you're running uh, uh, analog uh, operation. So uh, they don't apply to us, so we don't have to worry about them. Okay, so if you're in a analog mode you can you can um, control the, the the lights in a particular direction you can kind of do a, tra a train mode type operation with those switches so that's fine and anything else here nothing much and let's look at the um, let's take a, a brief look at the, the, this one single sheet single sheet of uh, sound documentation now I I'm not going to get into it here but I just don't think this is good enough to be honest but um, it's for another discussion uh, this kind of 
you know, documentation that you get for DCC sound is, is, is substandard, in my opinion, to be honest. Um, okay, so it's got its basic stuff here. It's got your CVs. Um, you've got the lighting, the horns. Uh, you've got the various heavy load, coasting. Flange squeal, as you'd expect, fan noise. Um, machine room lights on and off, so you're going to get getting that effect similar to the Cure Scale Class 55. Guard's whistle, you can control the cab lights at the different ends, which is good. Uh, fading out the sound and directional lights off the different ends, again, which you can control separately, so that's good. So good control over the lighting from the looks of things here. And then a lot of the kind of standard stuff. And then some uh, functions really ro around actually running the locomotive. And I guess that's, that's the issue I kind of have with this. Um, to give you the really basic information on how to optimize the running performance or to run the locomotive. So this is a Loxon 5 based decoder and that would allow you to obviously look at the Loxon 5 manual and uh, to get some additional information on the CVs. Uh, however, you know, every Loxon 5 is adapted to the particular locomotive and there's particular settings for that locomotive. And I guess that's what you're kind of missing. Um, when you get this sort of very scanty documentation like this, you really, you're not really getting the full application of this locomotive on the on the decoder, and um, and you kind of got to go and figure some of it out yourself. So, not 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 too great. Okay, so I want to get this on the track. A little bit disappointed by some of those little niggly quality issues. I'm going to take a look at that glazing issue. If I can't address that, that's not so good. So. Um, that's a kind of a little bit of a black mark. Um, we'll do a close-up view of this thing, and we'll I'll say then we'll get it out on the track. I need to I need to run this in as well. Uh, uh, so I'll give give it a go for an hour or so, and um, and then we'll be able to get into the running session. Okay. Okay. So now we're getting into the close-up view. Uh, so we're starting on the one side of the model here. You can see the excellent bogey detail and depth of detail on these bogies. And they are also robust bogies. Uh, so we're at the front here. You can see some of the cab level detail. You'll see a bit more of that in the 360 view. And it's got one of these really excellently detailed cabs. The overall livery application is, is crisp and top notch, I would say, in terms of both color rendition and its, its application. So no qualms on that front. A lot of underbody detail there in the, in the ascent there, the tanks with the fuel gauge on them. And that pipework that goes underneath the body, the kind of orange pipework. And on the far side of the, the model, you've got the, the, the kind of white uh, pipework. Uh, here we've got the large logo, uh, crisply delivered. Uh, the nice glazing all over. Apart from the glazing on the rear front glazing, where I did have a defect on it. So um, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So we'll get into the 360 view. Uh, this is the front of the model here. And you've got that really kind of unique... Uh, car light at the front there that's kind of been added which is unique to this model it's the first time i think this has ever been done on a on a on one of these models uh you've got the nice roof as you can say the nice gray roof and i think these roofs would probably benefit from a little bit of weathering and uh, it kind of calls out the grills a bit more if you weather them uh, but again really really nice detail uh across the model very well executed the nice glazing this is the rear of the model you can just see the, gl the glitch on the glazing there which is actually embedded within the glazing so Unfortunate that I got a model with that. And there you've got that kind of white, white pipework on the this side of the model. And again, again, nicely uh, rendered and, you know, very faithful to the prototype. I think that's, uh, I suppose, the, the big positive for this particular model and why people would be interested in it. Okay, so now we're going to get into the running session. Uh, so we're going to get underway very quickly and we'll start off with a very slow crawl. There is a full running session online for this, uh, which is about eight minutes long, which kind of goes through the different speed levels. We'll go through them very quickly here. I guess my main point on this locomotive from the running, running perspective is it is excellent. It is absolutely excellent. I have had a number of Backman Class 47s. I still have uh, a few of them uh, on the older tooling. And they were good runners as well, uh, but this is the best running of them all. And actually, I would say it's probably the best running Backman diesel that I have. 
uh, that I've ever had. Uh, it is a really, really nice runner. It was smooth out of the box. I did run it in, obviously, but you know, it, it, it was actually smooth. It could crawl without any running in, uh, without any engine noise, without anything. Uh, whereas, you know, other locomotives uh, might have a, might be a little bit noisy or that might be a little bit jittery until you run them in. This was perfect out of the box. I'm running it here in the out of the box CV settings. Uh, which are really good. I could have maybe tweaked a, a few of them uh, to, you know, sometimes you, you want to do that, but I didn't really need to for the sake of the running session. And I think the running session doesn't show it actually running at its very top speed. So prototypically these things would max out at about 90 miles an hour, um, 85, 90. This thing from a scale C speed perspective runs at 120, 125 with the kind of rake of carriages we have here. It's slow performance, is, it's crawling performance is absolutely superb and it is silky smooth. I would rate this on a par with the best models I've ever reviewed on this channel. If anybody's familiar with the Murphy Models Class 071, which is probably one of the best performing models from a performance perspective I would have ever tested. This is at that same level. In fact, it might even be a little bit better. Uh, this is a top performing model and you know, I had a few little glitches there when in the in in the out of box, but when I run this on the track, uh, I have to say it's just blown me away in terms of its performance. It is a super performing model, and um, I've no qualms and no not a single hitch or issue in the in the old running session. So I think that speaks for itself. So let's get into the summary. So in general, the Batman Class 47 retooled versions, they've had a range of liveries across 2021-2022, of which uh, this is one of them, uh, 47711, or Batman Code 35415SF. Uh, so this is the one we've been reviewing. Uh, in general, the Class 47s, the retooled versions, come in three variants, the DC Ready, Sound Fitted, and Deluxe. Uh, we've been looking at a Sound Fitted model here. All of them come with the twin shaft five pole motor with two flywheels, all wheel pickup and all wheel drive, and they do run uh, on radius two curves, and I didn't see any issues on radius two curves. Extra features, the comprehensive lighting uh, features, uh, the usual directional lighting, uh, which is controllable uh, in both directions. There's the unique headlight that's on this particular model. There's cab and engine room lighting, and the cab lighting, again, uh, can be on either end and controlled separately. Comes with metal sprung buffers, uh, rotating fans on the deluxe model. They're just fixed fans on the, the model we were reviewing. Uh, comprehensive detailing kit and etched nameplates, and there's twin speakers on all the models. The top scale speed, as I kind of mentioned during the running session, was 117 miles per hour, and that's pulling a peak current of 240 milliamps at 100% power. And that was while it was drawing the eight Backman coaches you would have seen in the running session. Unbox weight is 575 grams. So in terms of the selling price, uh, there's three different options, obviously, and a range of selling prices for those. And I paid the kind of 288.96 type price for the sound version I got, um, which is not that bad in the overall scheme of things. You'd typically be paying around 260 anyway for a general model like this, if this was the standard version, the previous version from Backman. It's the RRPs that are a little bit high that kind of catch the eye and anything that has an RRP like 369.95 just seems really, really high. You will get them at the kind of discounted level, uh, certainly the ready and the sound versions and, and also the deluxe. They're all being sold through the channels and those as of October uh, 2022. Okay, so let's get into the scoring. So First thing up is the running performance, and as per what you'll have seen in the running session, I'm giving this a 10 out of 10. It's a top performing locomotive. I didn't have absolutely any issues whatsoever. Silky smooth, as I mentioned, out of the box. Not an issue on radius two or radius three throughout the entire running session. I ran this thing right up to its maximum speed with the eight coaches, no problems. Running it at slow crawls, no problems really really smooth and even with the out of box cv settings as i said i didn't need to tweak them and i very often have to very pleased 10 out of 10 certainly the best running backman locomotive i think i've ever owned 
Okay, and that's saying something. Appearance and detail, a 9.5 out of 10. The main item here is the roof, actually, the blandness of the roof. Just inserting a photograph there of the real life prototype. And obviously this is in service. There's a lot of weathering on the roof, etc. But that roof, there's an awful lot more going on in that roof than there appears to be on this particular model. The venting is much more pronounced, for example. There just seems to be more detail on that roof. And whereas the light gray roof here is just really bland. It's really crying out for some weathering, that's, that's for sure. But even in its current form, uh, maybe a little bit more could have been done. Not quite a 10 out of 10, but still a very strong score. The rest of this model is really implemented impeccably. And even the roof is a well-executed roof. And things like the underbody detail, the cab detail is, is excellent. The paintwork is excellent. And its adherence to the prototype overall is excellent. So 9.5 out of 10, it's a very strong score. And that's the nitpick I have is the roof. It's just that bit bland and probably could, could have done with a little bit more. The sound is 9 out of 10. It's not faithfully produced, unfortunately, in the running session. I didn't have my shotgun mic plugged in. I only discovered that afterwards. Uh, so the sound rendition in the video is probably not as good as you would hear it in the room. However, it, it still is missing a little bit in the bass department. And I certainly would have liked to have that little bit more bass guttural sound. It would have been a bit more authentic than I think what you're getting. It's not bad and a 9 out of 10 is a very good score. It's not quite and possibly some of that's down to the sound file some of it's down to the speaker uh, to get you to maybe you know a 10 out of 10 type score but overall uh, you know I'm, very, I'm still very pleased with the sound on this model extras and variants fantastic range of lighting control on this pretty well all the things that you would ask for and that unique headlight that you don't get on any of the other 47s so you know this is a really well equipped model from that perspective the sprung buffers aren't a great implementation they were all stuck when, when i got it out of the box now some of that's down to the packaging which i'll talk about in a little while but their implementation isn't great either well visually they may look okay they, they do feel a little bit weak and they're not they don't feel as, as strong and as sturdy as say say the, the the buffers i had on the the last model i reviewed which was the class 60 from hornby which is really strong uh, metal sprung buffers on that particular model i just didn't feel these were quite up to the job also the snowplow connects to the bogey that's what the old model did as well uh, maybe there was an opportunity to change that but again the level of retooling may have been a challenge there and also it's missing the driver they've dropped the driver and as I, as I mentioned in the out of box i do like the drivers pre-installed so no one's going to get a 10 out of 10 for me on extras and variants unless the driver's in the model let's put it that way so that's that's it so it's 9 out of 10 is still a very good score and as i said up there in the top echelon in terms of, of things like lighting etc build quality and packaging no surprise, I guess, that this is not a 10 out of 10. The packaging, for one, was never going to be that. Uh, that packaging isn't up to scratch. And it's a, for me, the, uh, half the score is, is the packaging. So that's, I would have said the packaging was like a 3.5, 3, 3.0, 3 3.5 out, out of 5 for that. It's just not good enough for a model of this quality. It's not providing enough protection. And the reason those buffers were all crunched up and the reason I had that broken uh, grab rail at the front, I'd putting down to the packaging, to be honest, not protecting the model. And if there, was other, if there was other aspects of detail protruding on this model that might have been potential for damage, uh, which you would get on some of the other Class 47s, antenna, etc., then, again, this packaging is probably not going to properly protect it. So I think the packaging needs to be upgraded. Now, the other fact, factor that I did get that glazing issue, which is built into the glazing, uh, thankfully it's on the rear of the locomotive, not in the front. That should never happen. I think I've only seen that once before, and it was on a railroad model. So that's pretty inexcusable for a model of this cost level and, and so-called quality. So there's a one-off on that one. So, so that's why this is a 7.5. If that defect had been in the front of the model, it, I would have returned it, even though I, I'm, I don't, I, I'm not on mainland UK, so returning a model is it was a major pain for me. I couldn't live with it if it was in the front of the model. So not acceptable, a, a point off for that. Price value, at this price point, I think it is worth an 8 out of 10. It is not a cheap model, so there's no doubt about that. I think when you look at the relativity to other models, I give a higher score to, say, the, the Acura Scale Class 55 because that was a cheaper model than this and it came in at a lower cost point. I think the RRP is, is, is a ridiculous, so the RRP would be a much lower score, but typically you can get it from the retailers at this price, and this is the price you should buy it at. It'd be nice if you could get a bit lower, and I know Rails of Sheff Sheffield were selling some of the models at a lower price, and so people hopefully picked up some bargains there. But I think it's an 8 out of 10 here. 
but it's not it's not a cheap model let's put it that way but you are getting a lot for the price so overall uh, i've got it as a 9.1 out of 10 anything that gets into the nines is a tremendous model i don't get my scores easily so you know 9.1 out of 10 is a fantastic score if you exclude the price value it's still a 9.1 out of 10 so the price value really isn't determining this particular model it's not having an effect because of the the score i've given it uh, so a 9.1 out of 10 makes it a very very high ranking model one of the highest ranking models i've ever reviewed on the channel i think that kind of is in keeping with what, what we've seen uh, through the review here okay so let's get into my final recommendation so first thing i have to say is that backman's rendition of 47 7 11 lives up to most of my expectations and in terms of the running performance it exceeds them it's a fine model that is faithful to the prototype and delivers all of the enhanced detail and lighting capabilities you would expect from Backman's retooled Class 47. The quality niggles on my model were a disappointment, and if I'd purchased this from a local model shop, I would have returned it. As it was, I was prepared to put these issues behind me and enjoy this fantastic model. If you've been with this channel for a while, you know how much importance I give to running performance, and this model delivered the best running experience I've ever had with any model this year, and probably for a number of years. Smooth and silky at the low end, and fast and powerful at the upper end, this model was a joy to run from the first minute I put it on the track, without a single hitch of any kind on either my Radius 2 or Radius 3 circuits. The packaging is definitely below par for a model such as this, and the sprung buffers to a lesser degree were likewise, but otherwise this is a terrific model. At its typical discounted price, Backman's latest rendition of 47711 comes highly recommended. So what are your thoughts on Backman's Retool Class 47? And if you've either this model or one of the other Retool Class 47s, what are your thoughts on those? And did you experience any issues with them? As always, I'd welcome any input in the comments, please. So thanks for joining today. My next review is going to be a case of now for something completely different and is driven by a request I got from a manufacturer it certainly won't be like anything I've covered on the channel before, so it'll be very much an experience for myself and for any of my regular viewers. After that, depending on the arrival of some new bottles that are pending, I may take some time out to cover my own layout, both in its current form and what I'm looking at for the future. A number of viewers have requested this over the last couple of years, and there are definitely some things to talk about, including some investigations I've been doing in the context of an expanded layout. Please like, share and subscribe if you found this video of use and I hope to see you again on one of my videos in the near future. In the meantime, take care and happy modelling.